Hi, we have looked at the difference between data and information. Now we're looking at data in more detail and sort of breaking it down into individual categories by looking at data types. So, as I say, we can put data into different categories and this is really important because the type of data, the category of data, is going to dictate, is going to tell us what kinds of operations we can do with that data. So by operations I mean any sort of process on the data. Remember to go from data to information, we've got to do some processing, we've got to apply some operations on it. So to illustrate this point, have a think about what sort of operations we can do to the number 55, which we can't do to the word hello. Right, so we can divide 55, we can multiply it, we can add 15 to it, but we can't do those mathematical operations on the word hello. It just doesn't make sense. Likewise, Imagine if you were writing a program for a computer and you asked the computer to try and divide a date. So for example, Christmas Day 1960, it might be written with slashes, slashes often represent divide, but we're not saying here 25 divided by 12 divided by 60, we're representing a date. And if we try to divide this, the computer would really struggle, possibly you would get an error. So essentially, different operations are tied to different types of data and we don't want to get this mixed up because it can cause errors inside a computer and beside the operations that we can apply to the data the data type will also dictate how much memory space is going to be allocated to each bit of data so you know a number might take up less space than a word if that makes sense a number tends to be shorter than a word and this is relevant because if we're trying to cram loads of data onto a hard drive, we want to know how much space each individual example of the data will take up. And as just an example to illustrate this, not understanding the difference between data types can have big consequences. So for example, this rocket here, a French rocket back in 1996, exploded on its first mission. This is a billion dollar program to make a rocket. Because what happened was the computer tried to convert the altitude, the height data of a rocket from a bigger data type, so data type which takes up lots of space, to a smaller one. So it's trying to cram loads of memory space into a smaller one by converting data types, and it just didn't, it couldn't handle it. And so the altitude data suffered an error, and the rocket crashed at a cost of $500 million. So a lot of, a lot of money. Thankfully, no one was on board the rocket, so no one died. It was just a, like a robot. But still, a lot of money by converting data types and not fully understanding the difference and the importance of them. And to give you a less dramatic example of how important data types can be, this is a form for a Google account sign up. And if you are managing the Google website here, it's really important, or any website, it's important you are checking the data type of any user input matches what you are expecting. So here, first name, last name, I've put numbers and symbols and characters uh, and letters which doesn't really make sense, right? So we expect just a word, a name for each field, but I've put numbers, people don't tend to have numbers in their name. So as a website designer, you should be checking the data types. So here I press next and I get an error because my username has got symbols in, which again, you can't have. So it's important you check it. You don't want these dodgy details stored on a database. And from a security perspective, not checking it, not validating it can be quite dangerous. So we're validating it, we're checking to see if it's meeting what we expect, what's valid. And if, it, if it's not valid, if it's not a valid data type, we are going to not store it in our database. So it's all about checking the type of data is, if we, is what we expected to be input. In terms of something more concrete for what you need to know for your exam, we need to go through quite a few different examples of common data types. There are loads of different types of data which can get really, really specific. We're just gonna go through the high level general ones. So first of all, text, fairly self-explanatory, just a sequence of characters, characters being letters, numbers, symbols. Also the, the space is a character too, so you'd have to store that as well. Alphanumeric is where we have a mixture of letters and numbers. So text can be alphanumeric, but alphanumeric is just a mixture of letters and numbers. So for example, a postcode, this is a postcode for Downing Street. Uh, this is um, a mixture of letters and numbers. A date time data type is expressing, as you'd expect, a date and or a time. So sometimes it can be, just be a date, right, in different formats. You know, the Americans put the month before the day. 
it could have a dot instead of a slash can be different formats we can also attach a time to it in either 24 hour clock or 12 hour clock so it can be a combination but essentially we're expressing either a date or a time an object is a little bit of a funny one because an object as a data type is really just any component which is used in an application so you can think about things like if you were in PowerPoint so right now I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation I've got a table here the table is an object in my slide right it's a component within my slide I could break it down further I could have a, a heading as my uh, heading row as an object too in things like um, Microsoft Excel so a spreadsheet you might have a graph a chart that would be an object as well so it's quite a gen it's quite a general data type but any component used in a program boolean is much more simple boolean also called a logical data type is where we have only two options so computer science relies on boolean logic boolean being usually true or false are as our two options also yes and no and inside a computer ones and zeros which is you may have heard of binary so that's how data is stored as ones and zeros which corresponds to true or false which is coming from a boolean data type so only two values true or false yes or no one or zero we've mentioned text and alphanumeric but we've missed off numeric because we can go into way more detail about the numeric data type so these are kind of subtypes of the numeric data type so first of all an integer an integer is a whole number numeric meaning number right an integer is a whole number so something like 76 minus 53 a whole number meaning it hasn't got any fractional part there's no 76.5 there's no point it's just um, a whole number so decimal therefore is where we have a decimal point so things like 0 0.5 1.25 anything point something a fraction is really decimal expressed in a different way so we express it as a numerator divided by a denominator something like a half um, five quarters which is this we've got 0 0.5 is a half right 1.25 is five quarters different ways of expressing it a third one is a percentage so this is where we express it as part per hundred right so relative to 100 so here 50 percent uh, 125 percent is what the presented version of this data is each one will need to be stored in a different way and shown on screen in a different way right things are adding in the percent symbol adding in the slash we need to know this if we are designing a program that's going to display these types of data and currency is a bit different so currency just being an amount of money so expressing it in terms of pounds and pence, dollars, euros, etc. So we have the symbol and we are expressing currency. To convert between them, we need to use an exchange rate. That requires some thought, so which is why we have a type just for currency. And finally, a real is a slightly funny one because a real is just any number we can represent normally. And by normally, I mean we can, we can nail it down. We can actually represent it. Something like infinity is not a real number because we can't actually represent it in a normal way. It's just representing more of an idea of the natural numerical value. So any of these could be a, or are a real, um, and that's uh, excluding infinity, also excluding things like imaginary numbers, which we can't represent in a normal way. Finally, we have another data type, which we can express as limited choice. So this is relevant when we look at questionnaires in a couple of videos time or next video, actually. So this is where we, we are limiting the number of possible answers to a question. And this is really good because it can make our processing and also our analysis a lot easier. right? So if I'm asking a question in the questionnaire, which is something like, what is your favourite sport? I could get loads and loads of really broad answers, which, don't, which might be useful to me. But I don't have to sift through every single answer to extract the key bit, which is cricket, football, football. I'd have to read every single answer if it had an open-ended and limited choice question. So we want to have ideally a limited choice answer and that would be considered a data type. So some examples of this in practice, if I'm doing a questionnaire, I could frame it, my answers, in terms of a drop-down list. So I give a set number of choices as my limited choice to the question and I have to pick one. You can also have it in terms of buttons, right? So called a radio button is where we have a circle and I can only pick one. So I've got to choose between one of the three. Same with a drop down list. But we also have, say, tick lists. So tick lists are still limited choice, right? It's not an infinite list, but I'm allowed to pick more than one in this case. So limited choice, we are limiting how many possible answers we can have 
to a question and is our final data type to look at.